Hey guys, Troy and Cardauer here back with another podcast. Really excited to be back. Got some cool st stuff to talk about today. We have a couple new uh, soccer hobby releases. We're going to touch on, you know, the market is kind of heating up. Uh, January transfer window, a bunch of cool stuff happening. So can't wait to get into that. But before we get into that, we are starting uh, the its own YouTube channel for the select few podcasts. It'll be nice because I think some of you guys really enjoy the long form stuff we do, but we're gonna have some shorter clips, uh, do some giveaways and stuff on there. That'll be really cool. So if you guys want to see this podcast going forward, definitely go subscribe right now to the link in the description. We will make sure to have the podcast there going forward. And also it's going to be on Spotify and Apple podcasts and all that stuff. So great new stuff coming in 2021. Uh, really excited. But also, now that it's 2021, the January transfer window is open. Really exciting. Uh, some cool, not not too hot, maybe compared to a normal year, but I think that's understandable given the circumstances, but definitely still some stuff going on. Yeah, there was already what kind of movement. We saw a lot of movement at Chelsea, obviously. Um, but I don't expect too big of cra or crazy things. This this transfer window is just going to be like mid mid players moving and 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 loans and stuff like that so uh i don't i don't think we're gonna see uh an mbappe move or something like that mbappe is not going to real madrid you're not breaking that news on here <laughs> no not yet <laughs> yeah no not yet but there still has been some movement you know we talked a little bit before uh Sazbali, that's one um I even heard, I was hopeful. I even heard Jaden Sancho rumors. I mean, there's rumors about Manchester United all the time. I don't see that one happening, but I don't know, man. I, I want to see some movement. I want to see some a little bit of a shakeup. Yeah, I mean, they, they still want Sancho, but I, I read some articles that they, from a source, I don't know if it's trustworthy, that they're kind of glad that they didn't push through because of how uh, Sancho is kind of underperforming right now. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, well, they just, well, Chelsea, just, um, Chelsea, I'm, I'm obsessed with Chelsea. That's why I'm always mentioning Chelsea. Yeah, I see uh, the Manchester jersey in the back. <laughs> uh, Manchester United actually uh, was able to finalize a deal with Diallo. They signed him from Atlanta uh, last period, but he had to wait for his um, passport. He actually went through, so he will be joining the ranks pretty soon. It's an 18-year-old winger, uh, so let's let's hope he, uh, he fits in. Um they paid good money for him. So let's hope he, uh, he does something. Yeah. Well, I was going to, you mentioned Sancho. I mean, Manchester United has actually been looking pretty good. I mean, maybe, maybe they didn't need Sancho in the end anyways. No, they are. They're climbing up there. I think they're second right now, moment of recording. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been a crazy year. So I, I'm actually not surprised that they actually came back. Uh, let's hope they continue that way because at the end of the day, I think they deserve something. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you mentioned uh, Diallo going to Manchester United. Uh, I believe Daniel James might be on the outs. I think there's it's a yeah. lot of these younger guys. So there's not gonna be any big money moves, but a lot of these younger guys who aren't getting the playing time that they want, I think they can still be loaned out or maybe even sold and be impactful at maybe lower down the table sides. Yeah, as you said, I think the most expensive one right now that I was able to find or when I, whenever I uh, made this document was Zaboslai. He went for $25 million from uh, Salzburg to Leipzig. So $25 million nowadays is not that much, I would say. And all the rest was, was yeah, somewhere between $1 and $15 million. We had a bunch of movement from... Uh, yeah, just just overall, some players from Belgium went to uh, um, Italy. We have we have uh, actually maybe people will recognize his name, Bas Dost. He was playing for Frankfurt. Oh, yeah. They went. He went to uh, Club Brugge, which is a, a first team in Belgium, and it's just some yeah mid mid table or mid ranked players. I would say not really not high profiles. Um, it's interesting though because Diego Costa is actually a free agent right now, so he can move. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting where he's gonna go. Yeah, that was kind of a weird situation, right? Like he asked to terminate his contract, and then there was all <laughs> sorts of like speculation, like oh he doesn't feel at home, and then it's like wait that's where he's lived for like basically <laughs> ever, and then they're like oh he cheated on his wife, 
And then they're like, okay, if he cheated on his wife, why would he want to leave where they live together? And then some people were like, oh, maybe he needs to leave where they live together. It's a, a crazy thing. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, the thing I read, I read about Diego Costa is that he might be going to Wolverhampton. Um, so they actually still need a striker because of the injury of uh, Raul Jimenez. He got a... F- so now they're stuck with the 18-year-old Fabio Silva, the guy, the 18-year-old they signed from Porto. But obviously, he's not the leading guy there. So um, now Diego Costa's agent, who is uh, Jorge Mendes, if I pronounce that right, he regularly works with Wolves, so it's not unthinkable to see uh, Diego Costa go there. He yeah, obviously I mean, also played in the Premier League with for Chelsea, so he knows the league. It's a it's a high profile player, so that would be. I think he fits Wolverhampton well with that grindy style of play, that really fighting fighting spirit. I think I think he kind of fits Wolverhampton. I mean, I think those type of players um, are perfect for sides like that the guys who just kind of drop into the side and they'll grind out and get you goals like those veteran experienced strikers because the margins, especially, I mean, Wolves is actually a pretty good team. They're competing for, for spots, but the margins at that level are so, so small that if he can just get in like a couple scrappy goals changes their entire season. And I think he could definitely do that. Um, Yeah. yeah, But yeah, in terms of other transfer rumors, you mentioned mere mid tier guys, because I'm hosting Barcelona TV over here, I want to talk about Ricky Puig <laughs> real quick. He just he was linked to Arsenal, which would have been a really interesting transfer. Obviously a talented kid, but yeah. he re-signed. He just signed a new contract, which is great, but he re-signed the new contract. And they're like, okay, thank you. It's also time for you to leave, which was <laughs> like really weird for me to hear. Yeah, Kuman already made clear that he has no intention of using Puig in, in the future or he has no place there and I think he literally said, like, it's time for you to look for a new club. Yeah. So, I mean, I appreciate the guy is, like, not giving up. But then again, if, if your head coach, that he, the one who decides if you're going to play or not, says stuff like that, then maybe it's time to look for a new club. I don't know. Yeah, but it's it kind of shows what's going on in Barcelona. They're treating him like a substitute teacher. He's kind of like, oh, you actually know the homework is due tomorrow. You have to turn it in. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, okay. I'll wait, I'll wait for the real teacher to get here. I'm not going to listen to you. Yeah, it's – I don't know what's happening to Barcelona. They, I mean, Miss, they were asking Messi if, if uh, a Neymar transfer was was possible, and, and he just said, no, there's no money, so we cannot buy, buy Neymar. So it was pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, it shows you what's going on there. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, it just it just kind of it just kind of made me sad to be honest. Like here, I can't even talk about it that much. I t- told you before, I bought a bunch of random Barcelona cards from like 2011 just to make me uh, <laughs> feel better about our future. But that's okay. All right, we won't. This is we can make up Barcelona TV, but this definitely won't be Barcelona sad TV or Barcelona memory lane TV. We'll get into there's you know transfer window. We'll follow up on this see if maybe there's some other big moves in a week Still, or two or... I, I do have i do have one i want to mention uh oh yeah go ahead so uh david alaba the uh the center back who's now playing at um by munich uh he he's making a move out and right now how everything looks he's probably going to real madrid so oh wow that'd be big yeah they they are actually leading the race uh to sign him nothing is um they're just talks. It's progressing, uh, but uh, he's uh, he's not he's not moving there yet. But I think he he will he will be. He uh, it, it looks like he he it's a club he wants to go play for. Uh, it was always his dream club. You know, whenever a, a guy signs for a club, that's that's the first thing that comes out. I always wanted to play for this, this club. Um, but it looks like Remington leading the race. There's five clubs interested and it looks like Real Madrid is gonna end up being the uh, the winner yeah that, that's kind of surprising to me though I thought and once again it's all rumors you never know for sure but my understanding was Bayern didn't want to give him the money he wanted um, and Real Madrid is known kind of like for their wage structure like there was even art like Ramos they're saying wants a certain amount of money and even though he, they're like okay you're a legend but we our wage structure doesn't work like that um, so it's interesting to see Real Madrid, but you never know what's going on with the stuff behind the scenes. Exactly. They, they can say they have no money, but at the end of the day, it's, it, it, I just said, you never know. Um, I, I, I kind of see a move there. So 
I don't know, but uh, it would be a big move for uh, for Real Madrid. To be sure. It's an amazing, it's an amazing defender. He can also play a, a left wing back. Is 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 super talented. He's still is still young. Uh, well, young, arguably, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great addition, especially for uh, for Real Madrid. Definitely, you can never go wrong adding someone like David Alaba to your side. Um, but okay, yeah, sure. well, like I said, we'll follow up with the transfers. You know, everything usually happens in the last week or even the last couple of days, anyway. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see what's going on with that. But in the hobby, we have some news. Uh, Prism EPL announced also releasing in Europe. So congrats! You probably still <laughs> won't get a retail box, but it's it, it, you're allowed to hope now. Um, but it's cool. It's cool to see that this is going to become a consistent thing for them. Yeah, they they uh, said it's going to release in uh, in the UK store or something. I've read, so it's yep. going to be interesting to see if we actually get a some a, get a hold on on some of these boxes. But uh, they're probably going to be sold out in two seconds, like like the lost rookie things. So I I don't know. I I, I don't have my hopes up, but uh, it's cool that they actually give access to um, to to our to our side of the uh, the world as well so yeah it's just, it's a step forward yeah i mean i'm i'm learning more and more like i actually i had like a little disagreement with someone in the comments over comps and mm -hmm. i didn't even know like we were saying jade and sancho optics like i'm like it's on ebay it's 15 dollars, and he's like we cannot buy those like it's not that's not available here which i i didn't know yeah i mean if you sell something on ebay obviously you have to uh you have to tick boxes which countries are a lot like you're shipping to so if you don't take the, the the boxes he lives in then obviously he's not gonna see the, the oh auctions. so it doesn't even show up no i, I don't think so I yeah don't i think, think so. that must be the case because he's like I, if i look at my comps i don't see even converted 15 dollars anywhere well i'm not that ebay pro but uh yeah. e either it, it shows and if you want to buy it it says we don't ship it there uh, or it doesn't show at all. Either one of the two, because I had it. I already had it. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> I, I hope uh, I can get a box, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I'm trying to think what because it'll be cool if they really do it every year. I think the cool thing going forward is there's gonna be like so, like rook, real rookies in there. Like there might even. I think as soccer cards are being more and more produced, it's not gonna be the type of thing where it's like they only have a match attacks from a certain year. Um, yep. So the rookies, like maybe someone you mentioned, uh, Fabio Silva. I know he, I think he definitely does have stickers from before. Yeah, I think so. Maybe he, they can throw an RC on there. I'm trying to think what other prospects. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm just putting you completely on the spot, but top of our <laughs> head, if we can, if we can think of anyone who would be in there. Um, I don't know. Saki yeah. has already has stickers um martinelli has stickers yeah it's these interesting. guys I, already have stickers so yeah they do have stickers though they probably might even still throw the rc on there so that's as a first endless part, maybe yeah, yeah the endless debate we'll see with that <laughs> um i think another i'm i'm just chopping stuff in right here i think it was tops merlin they're talking about a retail release as well that would be cool it'd be it'd be just be amazing for me to walk into target or walmart or whatever you have in your country and just see like soccer cards there that would just be great that would be insane yeah i mean if it's the the merlin one right there from david Beckham oh, yeah. on the yeah so this they, they in the new release they took some elements from the from the older ones uh, and they yeah modernized it so it's pretty cool to see that these elements of the older set comes back uh but yeah, it's it's gonna be it would be amazing just to walk into a store, especially in Europe, and have something else than adrenaline or match attacks, or or these stickers, the World Cup stickers. So uh, I, I do have my hopes up for that one that it actually comes through. That is uh, Merlin. Yeah, but yeah, it's again it would, a waiting game. I I just got to get my hands on something. Like I saw a <laughs> post on Blowout. It was like. Oh, me and my son got our tops Champions League boxes in today. We got them for retail, only 80 bucks. I was like, 80 bucks? Screw your son. Give me the box. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. But I think there's more and more being produced, like I said. So I think we will get our chance eventually. So I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to that. Well, once again, follow up with EPL Prism. Maybe when we have, I mean, there's definitely, I don't think there, there's definitely not a checklist yet out or anything. So. 
No, I don't know. I I, I found the uh, the the page on the what is the the, the site Cardboard that... connection. Yeah, there was a yeah. uh, a list. It's just the basic stuff like they said three hundred cards. Each club has so it's just twenty clubs. Each club's ha club have fifteen cards in there. They also have uh, which was pretty interesting. I, I'm not sure if it was always the case. I can't. Re if so, I cannot remember it. But they 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 actually put in all the team logos in there and some cards from the stadium and stuff like that. So that's that was pretty interesting to me. Uh, they yeah. also have the color blast again, the color blast insert, which always looks amazing. So uh, yeah, it's gonna well, be it's gonna be actually, interesting. Perfect transition, perfect transition. We're in sync today, guys. It's a good one. Speaking of color blast, speaking of inserts, we have uh, our first Q and A question. Would you rather invest in multiple select slash prism or a couple rare inserts, one to four year flip? One to four year flip. I think I would still I would buy all the inserts I can right now. Now they're still affordable. Um, yeah, so I, I think actually inserts are even going to be a bigger deal in my opinion in soccer because of the true rookie debate. You know what I mean? Like, let's say for instance Kevin De Bruyne, right? You want to invest in him? There's a good amount of people who will just say, like, forget that 2016 prism. Like, I have no interest in that. That doesn't mean anything to me. But if you have a color blast or a kaboom, there will always be a demand for that. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm yeah. not even I'm not even necessarily sure what I'm advocating, like only like buy, buy each, but I'm just saying I think, like you said, those inserts are really cheap right now. And there will always be a demand for them, especially if they're iconic inserts, like you said, like the color blast and the kaboom. Yeah. I think just the base is just flipping material. It's what people use to to buy low and sell high, I guess. Uh, the kaboom and, and the color blast are more like in real investment pieces. I think what he said was one to four years, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a better play that than key than doing that with prism because a lot can change with the base and what was it prism and select yeah um so those are super volatile those go up and down and they go everywhere i think color blast these insert like color blast and uh kaboom are are much more you have a higher chance of them appreciating over time than of course the the base ones so i think that's a good play yeah the one thing i will say though is first of all be careful because in my opinion it's only select inserts like, I'm not a believer at all in – it's not an insert. I know this is not his question, but people will say, like, random 2018 select Messi. I would personally stay away from that. Um, I think, for instance, I'll just stick with the example I gave, De Bruyne 2016 Prism. I think that will go up going into the Euros and the World Cup. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. No one knows for sure. That's the That's the tough thing about it. Okay, so next question. Thoughts on buying the first World Cup sticker of Legends? Yeah, sure. I think I think that's a good move. World Cup is always considered to be the most prestigious tournament for, for countries. And if you can buy a Legends first World Cup sticker, then obviously I think that's a very good play. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there'll always be like demand there. My only question, honestly, is the supply. Because of the fact that with some of these... I mean, we right. both know at one point you could just order them off Panini's website. I mean, some were taken off and not everything was there, but I got to imagine some of these, there's a lot out there. So to be paying, even just psychologically, to be paying 50 bucks for something that was once 85 cents is is pretty tough for me. Yeah, but then again, uh, if you were able to buy cards last year for $2 and now they're 80 it's kind of the same, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think it's something about it was 85 cents direct from Panini. You know what I mean? Like if someone else had it, it's like, yeah. okay, they just got in before. But it's something about like, I mean, we all the time, that's all cards is, is buying things for a lot more than almost always buying it for more than the other person bought it for. But it's something about like, it's <laughs> yeah. like a store. You know what I mean? If you went to the store to buy a soda and it was a dollar and then you came back in the same store, Oh, someone else got it from the store and they're like, all right, it's 50 bucks. It's like, I just saw it yesterday for a dollar. I'm not giving you 50 bucks for that soda. Yeah, that's true. I, 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 I guess it was, it wasn't always also for all the countries. I mean, 
not every country was able to order them from the site. So yeah, it's it's difficult. I I, I totally get what you say though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I would still say it's a buy. I mean, it's it's it has to, it has to be a buy. If if that's not a buy, then I don't know what is a buy in today's market. Like Legends for one, and the World Cup is so prestigious. That's why that's why 2018 Prism for Mbappe is so in demand because also it's not it's also his first Prism, but it's also from a World Cup. So I think uh, I think that has some merit to it. Yeah, one thing I will say is though is be careful, especially for maybe some of you guys who are newer. The sticker condition is a lot tougher. I mean, it's a sticker at the end of the day. So for the most part, if you if you buy a card, like it's not going to be super messed up. And I would argue that at least of like something like a prism, a pretty good amount of them are gradable. But if you're buying stickers and trying to get them like slabbed up, it, it's that that's a tough road. So that's what I would say the one con is for buying those older stickers. Well, you actually perfect. Wow, we're at the segues today are on point. You just talked about Prism Mbappe. Prism 2018 Mbappe, should I grade then sell at the time of the next World Cup? The next World Cup. Yeah. Um Yeah, I would say so. I think that's that's a perfect like big tournaments are always a, a very good time to sell the stuff you got during the year i think there's so much attention to these big international tournaments like the euros like the world cup especially the world cup like if if the usa men's national team makes it i think i think those prices are going to be insane especially from those players like mbappe like joe felix all these younger guys right now are going to be like a year older so more mature their game involved so i think that's a, that's a very good play especially from from a guy like mbappe yeah, well, I'm going to agree with you and disagree with you. I think it's a good idea to buy Mbappe. Ooh, hot take. Uh, you To buy Mbappe yeah. right now and to sell at the World Cup. But I think to buy, yeah. like he asked, to buy Mbappe and then get them graded is a mistake. Because what I always say is you have to think about why is someone selling this? Like, I'm sure there are people out there, but especially at least if it's a u.s seller why have they not just graded this mbappe themselves i always say like i i'm a huge buy raw and grade them but i don't buy luca i don't buy mbappe i'm not trying to buy lebron rookie cards raw it's just too risky there's no i mean there is a reason but the reasons for why that person hasn't already gotten them graded themselves at this point in my opinion are pretty low because it takes like forever to get them back I mean, yes. And like I said, there are, there are reasons, but I, I will say like with a raw Mbappe prism, be careful because at least more than 50% of the time, I'll, I'll say that they're not grading it because it's not in gradable condition. No one, no yeah. one is like, you know, I, I buy things. This is like a deep cut, but like an NBA, someone like Cam Reddish, an okay mm -hmm. basketball player. Sometimes people just pull Cam Reddish out of the pack throw it in the closet or they're just like, I'm just going to list this so I can buy another pack. There's a reason why those are put up raw and good condition on eBay. No one has, I mean, actually, <laughs> well, no, no one just has Mbappe prisms for the most part. It's like, Oh, I didn't know I had this. Let's just throw it on blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, these people yeah. know what they have. And anyone with, with, with the knowledge would have gotten that graded already. So I'm just going to say, be careful with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have to agree with that. Sure. I think I, I saw this on another podcast as well. He was talking about it as well. Like the time of just going on eBay and kind of kind of know that you can get a 10 is, is becoming scarcer because people, obviously the market is booming. And even though it takes six months uh, to, to grade nowadays, it's the, the, the multiplier of going from raw to, to get a 10 is just, it's, too too high so the chances of finding very good gradable psa tens raw not right now on ebay are just becoming smaller and smaller so yeah i kind of have to agree yeah i will say just one real quick point on that i think in basketball that is especially the case because of how professionalized it's it's been but yeah. the one thing i'd argue for soccer cards is if you look at the psa pop reports i mean obviously there's a huge backup and those will increase but not too many people are like not as many people are grading soccer cards as you would think. So 
I would say, yes, those days are ending, but that's why I've been buying soccer and buying soccer raw because those things aren't slipping through the cracks on basketball. Everyone's trying to do that. Sure. There's not as many people who have the buy raw than grade than flip mentality with soccer cards, at least not with the right sets, in my opinion. But wow, man, sure. drop a like and subscribe. The segues today are A plus. The next one, CGC as an alternative to PSA, probably offering grading in England soon. I I, I don't know really much about CGC, so uh I I I have no I think uh com- was CGC against PSA, right? Yes. Yep. I I think PSA always have the premium. So I uh I don't know to be honest. I would I yeah. would I would also I would always go for PSA if it's about monetary value, I would always go for PSA. Well, I'll answer his quickly his answer I'll answer his question quickly and say no. Don't go for CGC. <laughs> and I'll use the rest of my time to bash on SGC, which he didn't even ask about. But right. like these alternative grading companies, the thing that I don't understand is their prices are still like at least $10 a card. I think SGC is like 10 or 12. And their turnaround time is the same as PSA. Like it's really long. Why would I ever in a million years send my cards to SGC? That makes no sense to me. Yeah, from that perspective, yeah. That's 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 true. I, w- like, I would I, rather... We- yeah, I think we actually ahead. talked about this on a on a podcast before is BGS, SGC, even just those two who have a reputation, they got to get their turnaround times. Like if they can fix their turnaround time, sure. But other than that, it's not going to happen. But yeah, uh, I mean, for me, getting a car graded in a in a company that doesn't have any type of reputation is not going to add any value. So I'm just not going to do it. OK, sure. we're moving through these. Thoughts on investing in former players turned managers, Ole, Gerard, Rooney, Lamps, etc. That's an interesting question. Um, I think I think it works with some of the players, like a Beckham. I think I th- I think that works because he's still very relevant and stuff like that. Um, but we we've it's the same with Thierry Henry. He was an Arsenal legend. Um, he's now at Montreal. Impact, if I'm not mistaken, unless he is already fired there, uh, and it's not that his. They don't, cards they don't are... fire managers in the MLS. We just kind of <laughs> let them. It's not a real league. We just let them have fun. Right. So I don't think he he has seen much of an increase because his manager at Montreal Impact. Um, and if you if you would argue it's only MLS, yeah, but Beckham is also in the MLS, so it doesn't really matter. I think some players are just so much more culturally relevant. That, that it actually helps their prices now for Lampard. Of course, I mean, he's, he's not doing a very good job. So I, I guess it also has to do with the performance. If he, if he, if he would be a number one sp- if he would have a number one spot in the Premier League, 10 points ahead of everyone else, maybe. But I don't think prices of his cards are just going to go up because he's the manager of Chelsea. Yeah, that's, well, that's one thing. I, I have people ask this in NBA too. I don't think you can invest in the performance of head coaches or managers. Like it's not going to work yeah. like that. Like if, no. if Trey young has a good game, his cards are going to go up. If Steve Nash coaches, if he has a great inbounds play, it's not going to increase his <laughs> prices. That's not how it works. So definitely. I don't even, even if the soccer card market, like things are changing. I think the card market is changing. Things are becoming more like before if a rookie had one good game in the preseason, like Taylor Horton Tucker, that never would have happened even a year ago in the basketball card market. So things are changing, but for managers, I don't ever see their card prices tracking, but I think being a manager and being in the public eye is really important for card prices though. Like the more relevant, even if they're like an analyst, I think that, will keep them in people's mind. It's just basic human psychology. I've even made the argument before that I think I could see a scenario where Ronaldo cards are, I don't want to say worth more because you can't even like compare it, but I could see a benefit to his cards. The fact that he's going to do a lot after he retires and Messi, Messi is not interested in those things, at least in my understanding. He just wants to, he's just going to go kind of (laughs) like, live his life where Ronaldo, I mean, there's going to be a Ronaldo like movie and all this stuff yeah. as we've seen with like, he's going to Ronaldo last dance, that kind of thing. As we've seen that yeah. increases prices a ton. 
Yeah, I mean, he has he's in Calvin Klein commercials. He has his own perfume. He's, I mean, he, he kind of sunglasses. I mean, name it. He, he's gonna do it. And with his physique, I mean, you're gonna see him everywhere. He's still like he's still gonna be very relevant after he retires. So yeah, I I I have to agree. Yeah, sure. And it's yeah. it's again it's it's the manager who puts the players on the field, but it's not playing. So, uh, I I I I think. It can be an, an an interesting angle, but I wouldn't bank on it. Yeah, I mean the one the last thing I will say on that is everyone he mentioned those aren't well. I guess I'd probably Ole. No offense, sorry if you're watching this, but outside of him, like they're all big time players, anyways. Like they're legends, anyways. So they're so it's a good investment. And in that perspective, I would say if they weren't really a, a notable player, and then they just happen to become a manager. I'm not sure that's worth investing in, but yeah. All right, guys. That's, I mean, that's it. That's a quick, it was a quick one today. If you want to see more, we really appreciate you guys supporting us in 2021. We're going to keep it up. We're going to keep it going. So please subscribe to the new channel down below. Uh, We're going to be doing some fun stuff over there and we will see you next time. Thanks again. See ya.